The British plans changed as their resources improved, but the basic British plan was to await the attack with a few units on the coast, called the Coastal Crust, backed up by a central reserve and the Home Guard. The emphasis was on stopping the blitzkrieg tactics of breakthrough followed by rapid exploitation in the enemy rear. The British troops and Home Guard were not expected to stop the Germans on the coast, but merely to slow them down and allow time for the armoured counter-attack to develop. As a result, several stop lines were built in southeast England between the coast and London. In addition, many villages and towns and defensible locations were fortified for all-round defence as so-called anti-tank islands and manned by the Home Guard. The main stop line was called the GHQ line and the anti-tank guns were moved there from the coast after it was built. The plan that the GHQ located northwest of London would be released for an armoured counterattack when the location of the invasion was known. The British plan dovetailed neatly with the German plan in that both required a pause and forces collected along a line inland from the coast while more mobile forces, forces were collected or landed. There were not enough troops to man the stop lines and as more mobile fo forces became available British plans changed to emphasise stopping the Germans at the anti-tank islands, which were con to continue fighting even when surrounded. After Dunkirk, the French tried a similar scheme to confound the Fanzas, but it failed, even though the French were defending a long river line. The French tried to mount a defence in depth with troops occupying fortified villages and woodlands in checkerboard fashion and the often superior French tanks operating in the gaps between the other troops. This system, used to defend the line of the Somme River, hardly slowed down the Panzers at all. The German tanks bypassed the opposition in the villages by moving through the surrounding fields. They came under intense gunfire from many directions, but overcame the opposition with a combined arms approach that involved air attacks on villages and a mixture of direct and indirect fire followed by an all-arms assault. Despite mass French, attack, French tank attacks, the Panzers were soon on their way and rushed through France virtually unopposed after just a few days. Another problem with the British plan was that the armoured counterstroke would be conducted without air superiority, a major factor in the failure of German counterattack in Normandy in 1944 and in the Ardennes. In the Battle of France, the German spearheads were overextended and vulnerable to counterstroke, but the concentration of the Luftwaffe denied the French army the ability to concentrate, and the fear of air attacks negated their mass and mobile use. The only major armoured counterattack that had been launched by the British against the Germans at that stage of the war was the Battle of Arras. It was done without air support and was a shambles. There was poor coordination between the infantry, tanks and artillery, and the tanks started the attack on their own. They were dived by many times, although only one tank was lost, that is, flipped over by the Stukas. The Stukas ripped apart the accompanying infantry. They suffered 50% casualties, and this ensured their retreat. Although badly outnumbered, the British force of 3,500 men inflicted losses of 700 men and 20 tanks on the Germans for the loss of 46 tanks that is 62% losses, including both tank battalion commanders of their own. The Germans were able to defeat the British tanks with anti-aircraft guns and artillery, though the unreliability of the British tanks and their tendency to catch fire caused nearly all the Matilda Loot II losses. There were 25% losses in the British tanks even before they arrived at the battlefield because they broke down. The German guns were able to take such a toll of British tanks because the British infantry had been suppressed by the air attacks and there was a total lack of coordination of the British tanks with their artillery, so that the latter failed to hit the German guns. If those sort of statistics and poor organisation and confusion and dislocation accentuated by air attacks were repeated in England, then the Germans had little to fear even from the best British tanks. The Germans also planned to use better anti-tank guns in Britain. Because in the Arrow attack, of course, they only had the 37mm anti-tank guns, which just bounced off the um, uh, 
Matilda's armour. 